So, I know now that I got a real problem. And as I've shared my stories with you guys before, over time, you know this as well. But this one is pretty bad. Listen, so this all happened this year in March. As you know, March was the height of the coronavirus pandemic. And everyone is pretty much getting paid to stay at home. Now, because I have a few businesses, I got all kinds of grants, pretty much $65,000 in grants that needed to be paid back over 30 freaking years. So I'm like, screw it. I'm not doing any work. I'm just getting high and chilling. Every day, I'm at home pretty much smoking weed and drinking all day. And my schedule was pretty much like this. Wake and bake, have breakfast, play Call of Duty Warzone, eat lunch, play Call of Duty Warzone, start drinking, play Call of Duty Warzone, have dinner, smoke a little weed, and go to sleep. I know what, I already know what you think, and it's gotta be Zach, and yes, it's me, and I'm trifling. But stick with me, I'm just getting started. Look, it's a Saturday night, I'm trying to hit the strip club on Burma Street, but it's closed. So I'm online looking for something to get into. So I start downloading these different apps. The first one I download is Cinder. Then I download another and another, like 10 different apps. And at this point in time, when I'm doing this download, it's not like I've had one or two drinks. I've been drinking pretty much the whole day. Now, I downloaded all these apps, but I haven't yet decided exactly who I'm going to contact or how I'm going to contact them. So I pick up the phone, hollering at some of my boys, trying to get them to come over and hang out and chill. But every last one of them is afraid of the wolf flu. And so they don't want to bring their asses outside. Now, I'm pissed off, lonely, nothing to do, tired of playing video games, so I delve into the world of apps. A little bit angry, a little bit angry, I say to myself, fuck it, I'm hanging out with somebody tonight, I don't care who it is. White girl, black girl, she males, black dudes, white dudes, I just wanted somebody to come over, drink, and get high with me. I was tired of being lonely. Now, if you recall, I have a condo in the French quarters, balconies, triple pole, the whole nine. All the food you can eat, the weed you can smoke, and liquor you could possibly drink. I'm sitting there now, straight messaging people and putting my address like, bring your ass over to the house. No bullshit. I messaged like 90 people that night. Then I go to the kitchen, fry some chicken, head out to the balcony, and smoke some more weed. I'm standing there for about 30, 45 minutes when I see this taxi pull up and out jumps this chick. She walks around looking at the addresses for a few minutes and I'm like, yo, who you looking for? She tells me my address. So I head downstairs, unlock the gate and walk her back up. Now, this chick says her name is Kelly, but she's got some really, really strong facial features. Don't get me wrong. Kelly's attractive, but she's got a very, very pronounced chin. I'm standing there looking at her breast, her hips, her waist, her hands. Everything is in perfect proportion except for that chin. So I said, Kelly, now I need you to shoot straight with me. What are you? Are you a regular girl? Are you a trans girl? Are you a she-male? What are you? I just want to know. I don't have a problem with you being whatever you are because I want some company, but I just want to know what I'm dealing with. Turns out Kelly's a man that's made the full conversion to a woman. I'm, I'm talking about getting things snipped off and everything. And if I'm being truthful with you, Kelly actually looks really, really good. But Kelly's real name is Kevin. Now I'm being straight up with Kelly. Listen, I ain't trying to have no sex. I ain't trying to do none of that. I'm just trying to hang out. So I don't want you to have the expectation that I'm about to spend some money with you. You can eat as much as you want, drink as much as you want, smoke as much as you want, chill out as long as you want, but don't have the expectation of me spending any money. Kelly replies, that sounds good to me, but I do have a pimp and I got to give him some kind of money. If you can at least give me a hundred bucks, it'll keep me from having any problems. Now, you guys know what happened the last time I had an encounter with one of these particular types of people and I didn't give them their money. I ended up getting beat up. My house broken into in the whole nine. So I didn't have a problem giving Kelly a hundred bucks. Listen, now that we got the business out of the way, Kelly and I are sitting on a balcony eating fried chicken, smoking weed, drinking Kool-Aid mixed with vodka, and having one hell of a time. And that's when two more taxis show up, and then a car, and then an Uber. And the next thing you know, I got 10 people outside my house wanting to come in. 
My neighbors see the crowd, call me, and are like, yo, Zach, you giving a COVID party? We're going to come over. I'm like, fuck it. Let's make it happen. As usual, I lock the door to my bedroom, and me and Kelly go downstairs to open the gate. Now, here's where I make my first mistake. As Kelly and I are walking down the steps to open the gate, I say, wouldn't it be cool if we pretended that we were married? You know, just to see what would happen, right? And now listen to me when I tell you, this was the worst idea I could have ever come up with. But again, I'm high, I'm drunk, I got grease in my veins from eating fried chicken, and that's just what I did. And I know it was stupid, but that's what I did. So we open the gate and 10 people turn into 25 people. Now we got a party going on in this bitch. The stripper pole is out. We got regular women. We got trannies. We got straight dudes. We got gay dudes. This party is quickly getting out of control. Now, listen to me. I'm outside on the balcony smoking a cigarette when this bad ass Asian chick climbs out of the window and starts talking to me. And again, remember, I'm drunk and high. And so I say, hey. So I say, hey, I know this is going to sound really weird to you, but I kind of need to know if you're a real woman. She smiles, starts to laugh and says, yes, I'm 100 percent woman. To which I reply, listen, I'm going to need you to prove it to me. She pulls down her pants, bends over and is like, take a look. See, I don't have a dick. Now, we outside on the balcony talking, laughing, having fun. She's sitting on my lap. Now, I don't forgot about the drunk tranny Kelly who's inside pretending to be my wife and about five minutes later outside he comes now notice this is the first time i referred to him as he and the reason why i'm doing this is because this is the point where the motherfucker started acting like a dude voice changing and all now as kevin is approaching the two of us he says what the fuck are you doing out here with my husband and i'm thinking to myself motherfucker this is about to be ignorant. And I'm looking at the body language and I know that this is about to be some bullshit. So I step and I'm like, yo, yo, chill. Everything is cool. Just relax. We all having fun. And again, now you can see the man coming out of Kelly and him converting back to Kevin. Strong chin held up high in the air, neck flaring, fist balled. His shoulders are rolled back, looking strong as a motherfucker. And I'm saying to myself again, this is about to be some bullshit. Let me calm this down. Now, Kim, the Asian chick that I was with, is like, I know this dude's not gay, and I know he's not your husband. He probably freaky as a motherfucker, but he definitely is not gay. And I know he ain't your husband. Listen to me. I'm between the two of them trying to keep them apart from each other. On my left-hand side is Kevin. On my right-hand side is Kim. I can feel the difference in force between the two of them, and I can feel that Kevin is two times stronger than Kim, literally pushing my body into Kim. And listen to me, the next thing you know, Kelly is swinging. And I ain't talking about like a girly swing, like an overhand, your elbow comes out and then your fist drops. This motherfucker is straight up throwing a Roy Jones lead hook punch at Kim. On top of that, we're all on my flimsy ass balcony, which needs to be renovated and has never, ever been renovated. Listen to me. As this is happening, I see it in slow motion. That punch coming. Me turning my head, trying to get away from it, closing my eyes, thinking to myself, oh my God, this pretty Asian girl is going to get fucked up. When the next thing I hear is, wah, like some straight up Bruce Lee shit, wah. And when I open my eyes, Kim has blocked this punch, palm strike the fuck out of Kevin. These two motherfuckers are on the floor of my balcony, rolling around into the rails. Now people are climbing out of the windows, coming out of the doors. Way more people than this motherfucking balcony can hold. And I'm like, oh Lord, we all about to die around. So now I'm there trying to pull them two apart while simultaneously saying, hey, go back inside, go back inside. The balcony can't handle this much weight go back inside when kim pulls her elbow back busting me in the nose now my nose is bleeding blood splattering all over the two of them people on a balcony are like ooh, and i'm like fuck it i'm going back inside all you motherfuckers are gonna fall to your deaths now i'm climbing back into the window these these two are still outside on the balcony fighting 
And when I sit on a sofa and look at the stripper pole, there is literally a she male on the pole stripping with this anaconda ding dong hanging out, spinning around. I sit there thinking to myself, how in the world? God, how do I get myself into these kind of situations? All I wanted to do was hang out with a few people and everything I do. I mean, everything I do turns out to be crazy. Listen to me, because this situation gets worse. Ten minutes later, there's a knocking on my door. Dare I say a banging on my door. And it's one of the police officers that I know. He starts to spaz out. Yo, Zach, man, what the fuck are you doing? He's got his Wu flu mask on and the whole nine. He's like, yo, you can't be having parties in the middle of the French Quarter during a fucking pandemic, Zach. What the fuck is wrong with you? You got to put an end to this shit right now. So he barges his way in. And once inside, you should have seen the look on his face. And honestly, I don't blame him because the scene looked like this. You got a tranny dancing on a stripper pole, ding dong hanging out. My nose is bleeding. Kelly slash Kevin has a gigantic lump on the side of his head. Kim has a patch of hair missing. You got drunk, half naked dudes, girls, all kind of other shit going down. The whole place smells like weed. And I swear to God, somebody in there was in a corner doing crack. That's when he really starts to spaz out. And he's like, every last one of you motherfuckers need to go home right now. He's got his flashlight out, taser in hand, not bullshitting. And then he turns to me and lays in the me. Zach, I'm retiring in a few months. Motherfucker, you can't keep doing this shit. I'm not going to be around here much longer to save your ass. He's got the flashlight shining in my face. The taser pointed at me and I'm like, yo, chill. Okay, okay. Understand, he's kicking people out of my house. Some of them still have their clothes in their hands. Now, as everyone is leaving, I grab Kim by the hand, unlock the bedroom door, gently push her in and say, hey, stay right here. About 15 minutes pass. He's gone. Everyone else is gone. My place is still a bit of a mess. And I finally go into my bedroom and lay across the bed and start talking to Kim. We're in there laying across the bed, laughing about what happened, watching Netflix. When I hear what sounds like someone open the refrigerator, grab a can of beer, pop it open, and then sit it on the counter. Thinking to myself, what the fuck? I just kicked everybody out of here. Now listen to this. Heading out of my bedroom, making a right. When I get to the kitchen, it's Kevin. Standing in my kitchen, drinking a beer, warming a slice of pizza in the fucking microwave. And I'm like, yo, you are supposed to be gone. What the fuck are you doing in my house? And he replied in a deep male voice saying, I see you got that bitch in your bedroom. Now I'm pissed the fuck off, right? And I'm looking around saying, listen, you got to get your shit and you got to go. But the house is so freaking messy that I can't find none of Kevin's shit. So now we're scrunching around through the house, trying to find the purse that Kevin came to my house with. And while I'm doing that, he's standing there smacking on pizza saying, you know, I'm disappointed in you. I'm really, really disappointed in you. I thought me and you had something special, but you just going to take advantage of me like this. I got this big lump on my forehead from fighting for you. I really thought that me and you had something special. I thought we was going to get married. Now, now, understand, I need you to imagine a scene. Shit is literally everywhere. Cups, paper, plates. The sofa cushions are spilled all over the place. I literally have to step over things to get to where Kevin is. So now I'm stepping over pillows from the sofa, grab him by his arm and say, motherfucker, you need to get the fuck out of my house. Just go and fucking leave. As I'm literally dragging him to the door, we notice that his purse is right there on the table by the front door. I push him out of the door, slam it shut, and say, go the fuck home. Now, for the next five minutes, you hear him outside screaming, motherfucker, I thought you loved me. You don't fucking love me. I hate you. I hate you, Zach. I hate you. Now, while all this commotion is going on, I return to the bedroom where Kim is, and she's literally laying on my bed in her bra and her underwear, sleeping on an angle across the entire bed. I shake her and try and wake her up and she starts to snore and I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? This is about par for the course for every fucking thing you do. Now, I'm back in the living room, picking up the sofa cushions, arranging the sofa. I sit down, have another drink, smoke some more weed and go back to playing Call of Duty Warzone. 
I get tired of playing that and end up watching Sharknado on the fucking sci-fi channel until the sun comes up. Listen, it's about 5.15 in the morning. I'm getting sleepy and Kim is now wide awake and wants to talk. Don't get me wrong, she's a beautiful chick, a really, really good person. She makes breakfast, we chill out the rest of the day, smoke some weed, hang out, and then finally goes home. Finally, when I'm alone again, sitting there on the sofa, looking around at all the damage that has occurred, I say to myself, man, I really, really, really need to get my shit together. 